Hello everyone and welcome to today's Cell Profiler tutorial, pixel based classification with plastic. I'm Nassim Jamali, post postdoctoral researcher in the assay development team in Ann Carpenter's lab at the Broad Institute. For today's tutorial, we need Cell Profiler and Elastic uh, downloaded and installed, which are both open source softwares and you can download them from their websites. Uh, and today we are learning how to approach images that are not easy to threshold, how to use Elastic to classify the pixels and then take those classification files or probability images to cell profiler for additional measurements and analysis. We are following the steps from pixel-based classification tutorial on cell profiler page on GitHub. And uh, I'm going to switch back and forth between the uh, slide and uh, tutorial materials and softwares. So to just, um, just wanna show you where you can download cell profiler, you can download from our website and Elastic. Um, the tutorial materials are on Cell Profiler GitHub um, under tutorial, and this is pixel cell, pixel based classification. We have the images, a PDF file, and the pipeline for uh, after we are uh, we complete the classifications, we take those images to this pipeline. And the images are here, and also they are from the Broad Bio Image Benchmark Collection. Uh, and we are working on a ch on Chinese hamster uh, ovary cells. If uh, you do end up uh, using cell profiler or elastic for your image analysis, please make sure to cite these softwares and uh, information on how to cite the softwares are available on both websites. Okay, let's go back to The slides again. So if you followed our workshop video so far, you learned an overview of Cell Profiler, how to develop a pipeline and main modules in Cell Profiler, including identify primary objects and thresholding. Everything we talked about so far and we went through in identify primary object or thresholding modules, we assumed that you could threshold the images. But what about the images that are not easy to threshold? For example, these are um, some Chinese hamster ovary cells, and we are looking at them in bright field in the IC. And these cells are not to separate from the background. Just based on the intensity of the pixels, and uh, if I threshold these cells, we can we basically end up with not a very nice and good threshold. But when we look at these cells, we can easily pick out these cells and separate them from background. For example, we can see like the texture is different from background or one part is brighter and one side is darker. So this could be a, another way that our brain can detect these cells from background. Also, if we see some bubbles or debris in the background, we can distinguish them from the cells because we know what the cell look like and the size and shape of those. So there is information here that our brains can detect and we need some tools to act like our brains basically. And one of the tools that is designed based on the same strategy is Elastic from Anna Krushik's group from EMBL. Elastic is a user-friendly tool that uses biologist expertise to create a machine learning classifier to detect, uh, in this example, cells from the background. Using pixel classification, it decides if a given cell uh, sorry, if a given pixel is part of class A or class B or um, as many classes that you would need um, in your images. So we'll annotate individual pixels for each class 
and Elastic measure things like texture and shading, and it learns from those, and then it makes a determination if a pixel belongs to the cell group or the background group. And this is the idea basically behind machine learning, which is a very active field in computer science, and it's basically having a, a smaller group or training set to train the classifier and then apply the trained classifier to a larger group. And by doing so in Elastic, we basically create an intensity stain from the bright field images. So Elastic is great for identifying different parts of an image, but it can't tell you much about the properties of those detected parts. And that's why we take these created intensity of things back to cell profiler to make various types of measurements from them. So now let's start with elastic. When you open elastic, we are going to create a pixel classification project and it prompts a window asking you where basically you wanna save your project and then you drag and drop your images here. Uh, today just to reduce analysis time I'm only working on a subset of the images that I showed you where to download. Um, so I'll bring only the first 10 images, drag and drop them here. So we have the images here now and uh, First thing here with the command or control and mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out here. You want to basically have a general idea when you uh, want to classify and see the, the entire image. Um, here on, on our left, uh, we have different sections. And it's kind of like cell profiler, but we don't add modules. You can't add anything here. It's basically after one step is complete, the other step becomes uh, active. So now we have the data here, the feature selection is active. Now we have a uh, feature selection. So I click and we have different features here, intensity, smoothing, edge, texture, um, and uh, the feature selection here is kind of like adding a measurement module to your cell profiler pipeline. And you can add these different measurements to help the classifier answer the question of whether a pixel is part of a cell or background. Now we are selecting all of them. So I click, hold, and drag, and I can select all the features. Uh, and in general, selecting all features improve segmentation. And depending on uh, the computing power that you have, you can think about what features to select and only select a subset of them if you don't have uh, enough computing power and a lot of images. And here, different sigma is basically um, shows uh, measurement in selected features for example, the smoothness, edge, and texture in different radii uh, around the, um, the pixel that you are annotating. So we select all and click OK. Now we have 37 features. When we select all, all of them uh, select them. Now training is active. We go to the training step. And uh, for training here, uh, we, the, for the question we are trying to answer, basically to whether a pixel is part of a cell or background, we only need two class, but depends on uh, your images, you may need more classes. And there is no limit on how many number of classes you would need. So double click and you can add any name you want, cell and background is what I want. And you can also select by double clicking on the color, the color that suits you. So I want to click and use magenta for myself and green for my background. All right. Now we 
select, make sure that the brush cursor is selected and size of one. Now we start with one annotation per group. Um, and we want to train across different images. And especially if you have different groups, for example, treatment versus non-treated cells, you want to make sure that you train your classifier across those groups as well. So we uh, start with only one pixel at a time instead of making several detection or selection for each group. This basically helps to minimize the chance of overfitting, which means that there, uh, there's too much information about any of um, these given classes and that can cause the classifier to do poorly in the areas that is not um, certain about and the, the uncertain areas. So I'll go ahead and select the background and select one pixel and cell and select one annotation and have the live update on so you can see how the classifier does. So then I add a couple more. And wait to see how those would perform. And again, you want to check these across different images. And again, I'm going to select this area, this background. Also, it's, it's good if you can try to have several, a similar number of detection um, in each group. And a couple of things here is um, if you Click on uncertainty, you can see the areas that the classifier needs improvement, basically. And uh, if you click segmentation, you can see uh, how a thresholded image would look like. And this is a great um, checkbox. If you have a lot of classes, this checkbox basically shows all the segmentation. But if you, for example, only want to see how the cells are segmented, you can click here. So I'm going to choose another image. I'm going to click that. You can also zoom in to make sure you have where you selected is pretty good. We continue this until we are happy with the segmentation or when adding a new um, label basically doesn't change the results. So now let's say I'm happy with this. The next step would be prediction export. And now we go to choose export image setting and transport to access border. This is important. Instead of YXC, we need it to be CYX. CYX. So this is important. And the format here, we want it to be TIFF sequence instead of TIFF. TIFF sequence. This is important now. Um, if you set the um, export as TIFF, you only get one probability file, but for TIFF sequence here, you get one file per the class that you have. So now we have two uh, classes, so we get two files. Uh, we are only doing this here because our example pipeline uh, that we are working on next uh, is set to read the files separately. So it would be okay for you, uh, for your real data, basically, if you decide to export it as one file rather than TIFF sequence. But again, we are doing this just for the pipeline that we are using. Okay, 
So CYX and TIFF sequence is the way that we want to export. And we click OK. And if you did uh, the way that I did, that basically um, only did a subset of images, annotated subset of images, you want to bring the rest of images and, and, and make sure that you have the properties file for all of them. So now we export all. And this takes a little while. Sorry. And while the progress bar is completing, I'm opening some profiler and bringing the pipeline in. So this is still completing. And if I can show you the images, you'll see that it's making the probability files. So we have image file and two probability files. Now it's complete. So we, I now uh, I'm gonna show you that I drag and drop the pixel based classification here. Yes. Um, I'm bringing all images here, the images that I am here, and in metadata, we have the three files, and in names and types here is where um, you want to make sure which class you define here first in your training set. Uh, I have cell first and then background. So here the cell, the CHO, is set to zero. So it's matching. If I had my background first here, I should have changed the name to background. So I update these and we have all files. So the first module is basically just showing you what would happen if we were to only threshold these images. As I showed you in the slides as well, uh, we wouldn't have a nice uh, threshold. So we took these images to Elastic, we classified the pixels, and now we brought those here. So now we use those as a mask, and then we detect the size. You see that it's done nicely and it's nicely separated and uh, we have a couple of measurements module to measure object size and shape and texture uh, in these detected objects. Okay and this is how basically we can classify the images that are hard to threshold. We take it to elastic and uh, bring them back to uh, to sub profiler. Now let's go back to our slide deck. So we learned how to annotate and segment the images that are hard to threshold and basically create an intensity stain from the bright field images. If you have additional questions, uh, please feel free to reach out from uh, via forum.image.sc. Um, this forum is started by groups leading the Cell Profiler and ImageJ project. They teamed up and they merged their forum towards creating a collaborative network of support for the scientific image community. And since then, a lot of the open source software joined this community as well. Um, so it's a great community and people uh, answer questions and we are also available to answer cell profiler questions. You can um, just make sure that you 
tag the specific group that you have questions from. Um, if you have questions for self profiler, choose the self profiler tag and create a new topic and ask your questions. And the collaborative effort for creating a, a network of support for the scientific image community is currently in progress, Center for Open Bioimage Analysis, and the site will be available in the next couple of months. So take advantage of resources that are available to you. Thank you for following along and I hope you enjoyed our today's tutorial. Deliver. Bye.